When a chicken is fed grains, we know it makes their meat significantly less nutrient dense and it messes with the fatty acid profile in their skin and in their fat. Because of this, grain fed chicken is a lot worse for us than pasture raised chicken. However, does this hold true for beef also? You see, cows are ruminant animals, meaning they have stomachs with four different multi-chambered compartments, which allegedly can break down the things that they're fed a lot better than chickens can. In today's video, we're going to be answering just this question. Is grass-fed beef better than grain-fed beef? First up on the agenda today, we're going to be looking at exactly what grass and grain-fed cows actually eat. Now, grass-fed cows, it's pretty obvious. However, what are in these grains that they're fed? And then after that, we're going to be looking at the logic behind grain feeding. Because, I mean, grass is free and grains cost money. So why do farmers opt for grains? As well as whether or not feeding them grains affects the amount of nutrients they have and whether or not the glyphosate that is on these grains ends up in the flesh of the cows. And then at the end, I'll break down whether or not it's worth spending the extra money to get grass-fed beef. Now, grass-fed cows are fed grass, and I'm sure you already knew this, it's pretty self-explanatory. However, often grass-fed cows are grain-finished, but they're still called grass-fed. However, for the purposes of this video, when I say grass-fed cows, I mean grass-fed and grass-finished. And grain-fed cows are fed grains, particularly at the end of their life. Often, grain-fed cows will actually eat grass for the majority of their life. And even when they are eating these grains, it's often in supplementation with the grass that they're on. Now, the problem with grain-feeding a cow is that these grains are often filled with very toxic substances to the cows and to humans when we eat them. So the question we have to look at is, do these grains that they're fed end up in their flesh, as well as the fact that these grains aren't as nutrient dense as grass. So by consuming these grains, does it mean that the flesh of the cows that we're going to eat is less nutrient dense? And are the pesticides that are sprayed on these grains, because often when they grow things like soy or corn, which is some of the main ingredients in these grains, they spray things like glyphosate on them whilst they're growing. So then the argument is, are those pesticides being eaten by the cows and then ending up in their flesh? On screen right now, you can see exactly what's in these grains. We've got things like corn, soybean meal, and when they say fats and oils, they mean vegetable oils. And we can very clearly see, demonstrate across society, what these oils are doing to humans. So we can only imagine what they're doing to cows also. But the thing about grain feeding is that, well, grains obviously cost money, whereas grass paddocks are free. And based on the fact that, well, they're not going to be as good for cows, because it's not their species appropriate diet. So what on earth is the logic behind feeding them grains? Well you see, when cows are fed these grains, it fattens them up. And so obviously, a fatter cow weighs more and it also tastes better. So the farmers get more money for these larger and fatter cows. Now if I was a conspiracy theorist, I would point out to you that these grains contain the exact same ingredients that humans are told to eat. However, I don't have my tinfoil hat close to me, so I'm just going to assume this is a coincidence. So, let's get into it. What are the differences in nutrient quantities between grass-fed and grain-fed beef? Well, surprisingly, there's actually very little data on this topic, which is why most people in the carnivore community don't speak about it. In fact, up until recently, there was literally zero data on it. There have been a couple of recent studies which have shown that grass-fed cows contain slightly more nutrients than grain-fed cows. However, if we look at this from a purely logical perspective, it's pretty simple to conclude that the nutrient quantities in the muscle meat of grass-fed and grain-fed cows will be pretty similar. Because like I said at the start, even grain-fed cows are fed grass for most of their life. So all their muscle meat is built from the nutrients in the grass. In the few studies there are on this topic, it shows that, like I said, grass-fed beef has just slightly more nutrients than grain-fed. However, there is one key difference between grass-fed and grain-fed beef, and that is that grass-fed is better, purely based on the things that it doesn't have. But what do I mean by this? Well, let's take a look at the fatty acid profiles of each type of beef. When we take a look at the good healthy fats, like EPA and DHA, which are the carbon-20 and 22 fatty acids that our brains need, what we see is that in the grass-fed, there is twice as much of them. And then when we look at the bad fats, like linoleic acid, which we know is inflammatory to humans, what we see is that it's much more prevalent. There's a lot more of it, roughly two to five times more, depending on the study. And then as a result, we see the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio significantly higher in the grain-fed beef. Now, this is not a good thing. The lower we can get the omega-6 in, com in comparison to the omega-3, the better. Now, this ratio is two to five times higher 
then the grain-fed beef, then the grass-fed beef. Hey guys, it's me again. I wanted to let you all know that I've written an ebook, which is a complete beginner's guide on the carnivore diet. It's only 17 pages long and it covers everything you need to know. So whether you're a seasoned carnivore who wants to refresh their knowledge, or a beginner who's looking for somewhere to get started, this one's for you. All you have to do is head down to the description of this video, click the top link, and I'll send it to you for free. And on top of that, I'll send you a couple emails each week with some bonus tips I have regarding the carnivore diet. There's no catch, it's literally all for free. So go down to the description to claim your free copy now. Another thing to consider about grain-fed beef, which again is more of a logical issue. I do have all my studies referenced in the description, but this one's just a logical one. And that is, well, when these cows are grain-fed and therefore fed an improper diet, what happens is they tend to get sick more. I mean, we can just take a look at their fatty acid profile. Their fatty acids signal an unhealthy animal. So because these animals are getting sick more, they need more hormones, more antibiotics, which, I mean, that's going to end up in their flesh at least to some degree, you'd think. Then the other issue with grain-fed cows. Usually, I mean, sometimes they do it, but it's infrequent. Grass is not sprayed with pesticides because, I mean, you just don't need to. But as I mentioned earlier, the grains that they eat, that is sprayed in glyphosate. And when they sample the grains that the cows are fed, they often see a lot of pesticide residue on them. Now, we know these pesticides are present in the food they're eating. But the question that we need to answer is, are these pesticides broken down by their multi-chambered stomachs, or do they end up in their flesh? And the answer to this question, as we can all see in the study, is, well, yes, it does. Our own results showed that glyphosate is detectable in intestine, liver, muscle, spleen, and kidney tissue. And then the conclusion that they came to was, glyphosate residue could reach humans and animals through feed. So that right there is another aspect where the grass-fed cows will edge out the grain-fed cows. So... In summary, the best beef that you eat is the beef that you actually eat. So if grain-fed beef is the only beef that you can eat, it's still amazing, it's still much better for you than anything else you could eat. However, the grass-fed cows will be healthier, so they're going to have less of the hormones given to them as well as less of the antibiotics. They also are slightly more nutrient-dense, they have a much better fatty acid profile, and they're definitely not going to contain any of the pesticides. In my opinion, if you have access to grass-fed beef, and you can afford it, it is probably worth it. Anyways, that concludes today's video. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing down below. It's completely free, and it means you'll see more videos like this. On screen right now are some other videos of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.